This is a lecture from Open Tuition. For the free lecture notes that go with this podcast, please visit opentuition.com. At the end of our previous session, our first introduction indeed to corporate tax losses, we got as far as section 2.2 and had dealt with example 3. As you can see, I've just skipped on a couple of pages here and want to pick it up at section 2.4 because this is a relief we already know about. What we mentioned at the end of that previous example is that any unused losses remaining unused after you'd made any current or carry back claims that you chose to make, there was only one thing to do with it. It had to then be carried forward. Now we know what happens if any loss remains unrelieved after current year and any carry back claims have been made or indeed no such claims were made. It was up to you to decide what option you pursued then any remaining loss will automatically be carried forward. When it's carried forward, it goes against one thing. The relief is against the first available trading profits from the same trade. So when it goes forward, again, you there's no question of not making a claim in the future. As soon as there, as soon as there is the next available trading profit, then any such trading loss carried forward will be set against that future trading profit of the same trade. You can't say, oh, this year I've got such a small trading profit, I don't think I'll bother using that trading loss brought forward. Yes, you will. There is no choice. Now, there's no time limit here on the carry forward period. Losses must be relieved as soon as possible, i.e. against the first available trading profit. Now, I'm going to talk you through example five, but it's just a slight extension for what we did in example three. And I'm expecting you, therefore, to be able to work this one through for yourself. We've got to show how the losses will be relieved on the assumption, again, that the loss reliefs will be taken as soon as possible. So we've got four accounting periods, but they're all 12 month periods. Years ended 31st of March 2012, 13, 14 and then 15. What we see on the trading income performance, there we go. There you have your loss in the year ending March 14, which means when you set up these equivalent columns in your answer, you will copy in the 40,000, the 20,000, the 20,000, years ended March 13 and 15, and you will, of course, write nil into your corporate tax computation for the year ended March 14. You will then leave a gap of a few lines because in that gap, that is where the trading loss brought forward will show. And we may discover, of course, in this example, that when we apply our current and carry back reliefs, there is still loss, some loss left over sufficient to go forward against that next available trading profit there, that 20,000. And it's there that that trading loss brought forward will show. Not against total profits, which of course would be down here, hence why I left a gap. Not against total profits, the carry forward against the future trading profit. But what do we have available in the current period? Now, you will copy this in. So at this point, get your answer set up. So set up those four columns, copy in the trading income figures, put nil in for the loss then copy in the property income after you've left a gap of, well, probably three or four lines would be a good idea here. Copy in your interest receivable. You would then have a subtotal of total profits, but don't yet uh, fill those in. What we'll then do is leave a gap into which your current and carry back claims would go before then deducting your qualifying charitable donations. Again, hold fire on showing those. So just copy those numbers across into your answer, please, and then we will continue with it. So pause at this particular point for you to do that if you have not already done it, and then we'll show how those and how and where those losses will be applied. Okay, hopefully you've got your answer format set up. And what you'd have, of course, is firstly a current period claim. That amount was £8,000 in the current period before donations. You would therefore use 8000 of your £43,000 loss. That opens the door to the carry back. It's a full year end. You can go back just the 12 months. What do you have in this period? 20 plus 3 plus 3 
that's £26,000. Apply your carry back claim, 26. That is as far back as you can go. And both those donations, the £1,000 in each period, will be lost. How much loss have you used? 8,000 plus 26,000 is 34. You've used 34 out of 43. You, of course, will have identified that, or you will identify it, in your loss memorandum column. 34 out of 43 leaves 9,000 to do what with? There's only one thing. Carry it forward. Where do you carry it forward against? Against that 20,000 there. That's where your 9,000 would be shown as a deduction. That would still leave some income plus your other non-trading income get your total profits deduct your donations you'd have a ttp for that period as you'd also have a ttp for this earliest period and your exercise will be complete there i'd like you to copy that up if you haven't already done so please and then check through with the answer to example five again as you know at the end of your course notes and then come back and join us and we'll deal with the last of the corporate tax loss reliefs to deal with so far as at least the single company is concerned. Okay, so nowadays we come rather appropriately to the last, the final thing indeed in, uh, for us to deal with in terms of our loss reliefs. I say appropriately because we're now looking at the corporate equivalent of our terminal loss relief i.e. looking for how we may relieve losses sustained within the final 12 months of trading. Now, if you sustain a loss in the final 12 months of trading, very clearly after you've ceased trading, there are no future trading profits for you to carry forward to. So as there's no carry forward, what of course HMRC kindly allow the company to do is to have a more extended carry back. Now, the normal carry back claim is of 12 months, but that carry back period is now extended to 36 months. So instead of only being able to carry back the losses that we incur in the last 12 months of trading, prior to station trading, instead of only being able to carry back for 12 months, we can carry them back for a full 36 months here. It is effectively an extension of what you normally do on the carry back claim, so that again, the losses, when carried back, go against total profits, which again, of course, is before the deduction of the qualifying charitable donations. So it's just more of the same work, except that the carry back is now going back three years instead of just one year. And we go back on a LIFO, a last in first out basis from the most recent till the oldest profits there over that three years prior to the loss making period. So we see now in example four, the situation set up for A Limited, and we've got to show the TTP for all accounting periods. Now, again, I would hope that you are competent and confident enough to have a go at this for yourself. So I would like you, therefore, to set up your answers to this. You've got the accounting periods. There is the final period. We've got the results through to the 31st of March 16 because that's when we cease trading on the 31st of March 16 there. So we have a loss of 97,000. When you copy this line in as trading income, you will replace, of course, the 97,000 with a nil assessment. You don't really need me to tell you that. Copy in the interest receivable figures, copy in the chargeable gains, and come to and show total profits. Don't yet deduct the qualifying charitable donations because against those total profits, you'll now be showing your carry back reliefs being applied. So store, pause this at this particular point in time and please then set up that answer framework and then again come back and join me. By all means, have a go at showing the loss relief, the use of the 97,000. I think you probably can do it anyway but I'll have a quick chat with you about that before letting you loose on it again. Okay, 
Hopefully, therefore, you've set up your uh, computations. You've got the three rows in for trading income, interest income and capital gains. And all you've had to do is replace the 97,000 loss with a nil assessment. How do we then use that loss? Current period claim first. What have we got in the current period? 10,000. Against that 10,000 total profit before the donations, you will show your current period relief. You'll also keep a loss memorandum, of course, going in which you will show period by period the loss that is then being used. We go back then on a LIFO basis back to the previous period. There was 34,000. So we apply another 34,000 of the 97,000 pound loss in that period. But instead of stopping with a one year carry back, we can go back three years. So we've gone back one year with the 34,000 there to March 15. We could come back a second year here to March 14. We then got coming back again six months to March 13. So we can go back eventually against six months there of the year ended September 12. So showing that uh, loss continuing backwards therefore, what have we got? We've used 10,000 in the current period, 34,000 in the previous period, We've got there 20 plus 2 plus 6 is 28,000. Keep a little uh, watch on that loss to make sure you've still got enough loss left over in terms of your carry back. Um, we've gone back one year, two years, two years, six months. There's the 16,000. If you've still got sufficient loss, the 16 goes as well as the 28, as well as the 34, as well as the 10. You could then go back, not against all of that 12,000, but we've gone back one year, two years, two years, six months. So it would be against six twelfths of that 12,000, i.e. a maximum claim of 6,000 would be available. That would guarantee you could still use those donations, but those will be lost, they will be wasted. Those will be lost, they will be wasted as well there. Hopefully you can uh, put that together on the uh, your own computation and then please check through again with the answers in the back of these course notes and make sure you're happy with it. The beauty about loss reliefs and the questions thereon is so much of your answer is just a copy down from the information in the question and you've got to remember very very little in point of fact. What do we have to remember? Current period claim is total profits. What is to, what are total profits? You should know that. It's your basic pro forma computation. It's your income and gains before deduction of donations there. So current period, total profits. If you wish to, you can then carry back. Again, you don't have to carry back. But if you want to carry back, then you must firstly apply the relief in the current period. If you have applied in the current period, if you don't have to carry back, you could carry forward. And if you wanted to carry it all forward, then fine. Those would be your options. Current period, carry back, carry forward, option one, and usually the one tested. Another possible option, current period, but no carry back, and instead carry forward. Or third option, don't relieve in the current, don't therefore carry back, and simply carry it all forward. There's your three options. And when it's current and carry back, whether it's one year or as here the cessation for terminal loss relief it's a three-year carry back you target total profits assuming it's not cessation then any unused loss may be carried forward and that is purely against trading income now they are pretty basic rules and in many ways are pretty similar to what you did in income tax so i'd hope you'd be competent and competent enough to be able to deal with any such examples on this OK, we'll uh, bring this particular session to a close now, having completed that uh, important chapter on corporate tax losses. So a nice uh, quick little session, this one, once you've reviewed through the answers to those problems. And what we've done all the way through our studies of corporate tax so far is just refer to the chargeable gains figures. We've been given those numbers. We've been told what to do with chargeable gains and losses. What we don't yet know how to do is how to calculate those gains and indeed losses so far as corporate tax is concerned. 
So we've got a few chapters worth of capital gains now coming up in our next few chapters. So if we bring this one to an end and we look forward to talking to you again about chargeable gains for companies within corporate tax.